Uh, Karina, you can either pick up that thread or you can talk about your own film. Um, or a couple of your, your, your debut. Yeah. Your, you your know, debut. I, um, I don't know that I'm really passionate about anything that I've seen here. Um, I guess my favorite film that's in the festival I actually saw right before I came here, and that would be the Kelly Record film. Which none of us um, have been lucky enough to see. We're dying to see it. But. Well. Can you, talk, can, you talk, <laughs> can you talk about it at all? Because uh, she's sure. such a, she's such an important director, and she would absolutely be something we'd all be talking about. But it doesn't screen till yeah, tomorrow morning. Not. I'm I mean, really I was, glad that you're going to talk about it. I absolutely. was very I was very fortunate to be invited to a screening in Los Angeles right before the festival, um, and actually right before Venice. Um, but it's you know it's it's it tells a version of a true story about an Oregon Trail um, company like a company. T a group of families taking the Oregon Trail who diverted from the main path and got lost and um, basically wandered in the barren west for days and days and days without water. Um, and in some ways she's bringing in um, some more modern allegories um, uh, in terms of, you know, taking advantage of brown people. But, um, you know, I, I mean, it, but it's also, it's also very much a feminist piece, um, Michelle Williams is pretty great in it um, and you know I really feel like this movie is it's um, it, it has more of a substantial narrative than Wendy and Lucy and Old Joy it has performances that could be considered star performances if somebody like Focus bought it and put a bunch of money behind it Bruce Greenwood would win an Oscar Mm. Um, but you know, probably people won't actually see it. Is at it all. made in the same kind of still wrapped poetic way that you could argue Old Joy and, and Wendy and Lucy are, or sure. as she moves up to that next level in terms of, as you say, possibly budget or the actors that she's working with? Does she change the, the approach? No, no, no. I mean, she's she's doing what she does, and it's it's certainly it's it would be austere compared to most you know American art house films. Um, it's, um, it, she's not forcing action. It's a Kelly Record movie. Um, but it is, it is um, just a little bit more, I guess, I don't even know what the word would be. Um, accessible? Not even really accessible. It's just, it has a little bit more going on. There's a little bit more happening. It's a little bit more incident driven. Um, so. Danny? <clears throat> well, I, I feel like uh, I need to, uh, maybe not pick a specific film, but be an advocate for the uh, Wavelengths program, which uh, I feel like for the people who uh, choose to attend that is probably the, the richest and densest and most consistently um, amazing uh, series of programs. It's the Experimental Sidebar uh, program by Andre Picard that runs uh, the first weekend, uh, including today, Monday. Uh, of TIFF, and it's uh... Should we raise our glasses briefly to Andre Picard? Yes! Yeah, Wait, <laughs> <Wait, what? laughs> <laughs> um, And it's just, it's like, su it's such a variety of kinds of films, mm -hmm. and experiments, and pleasures of cinema <laughs> that, I mean, there's, you know, it's like you could just see those movies over that weekend and, uh, and, and be a satisfied experience. Um, you know, things like James Benning's Roar, or like T. Marie's Slave Ship, or um, Nishikawa's at Tokyo Abisu, like, uh, or The Burning Bush, like these are all films that are really expanded my idea of what movies are, which none of the feature-like films I've seen outside that program have done this year. And can I add as well that, uh, for those, uh, unless I'm speaking out of turn, that uh, as far well, as I know, all the people at this table are not uh, really schooled in the yeah. avant-garde that yeah. much, and as, this is but not you, something but that you know, anyone can do this. Like I, I'm not either, and I just like last year I started going, and I was like, like, and I, yeah. this is incredible. I need to be doing this all the time. We should get, should, we should get Michael Suchinsky on the phone to yeah. talk about what yeah. yeah. yes, yeah. I But I mean, that's I think that's one of the really valuable speaker. things yeah. that yeah. even even people like us, uh, you know, so-called authorities, all those words are in quotation marks, <laughs> yeah. by the way. But I mean, these these are films that we tend to not encounter on our regular beats, and it's something that we don't. And it's often something that a general public thinks you need to be a specialist in before you can even encounter it. And yet, we don't have that much vocabulary, at least I don't, I don't know about else, for talking about these kind of films. And yet, really going in there, it's been, I, I completely agree, it's been some of the most like, revelatory experiences here. Um, particular mentions, you said James Banks, were, uh, I should point out as well, we saw this the other night, uh, it's, it's on Grenier's Burning Bush. Burning Bush. Which is glorious. Uh, Tom Anderson's new film, uh, Get, Get Out of the Car. 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 Which is also excellent. Um, these these have been some of the best films um, at TIFF. You know what they really they really uh, communicate like you know like seeing uh, like you were talking about seeing uh, curling and then uh, poetry back to back and how those inform each other. And I feel like a Wavelengths program does that too. The the Skolomowski film Essential Killing, which we started talking about earlier today. Yeah. I feel like like that film is so much more interesting to me because I've spent the weekend watching films that were studies of uh, color and light and abstract movement 
which that film is full of, and I probably wasn't going to be uh, attuned to if I hadn't been seeing these other films before. Jason, do you maybe have an example of a couple of films since we've both seen so many that complement each other? I like what Karina wrote mm. this week about Passion Play and Black Swan as the two bird girl <laughs> movies. I missed, I, I missed Passion Play. How I could miss a movie with Megan Fox and Paul Murray is, oh, is me. Lord, 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 Lord. Lord. And we're, we're going to leave Passion Just, Play for a second, and yeah. I do want to eventually circle around to Black Swan because it seems to demand some discussion, but maybe first you can talk about a couple of films that inform each other or are diametric opposites or whatever the hell you want? Well, I just have like sort of good example and several bad examples because one thing that happens is you get all these adaptations. You get a lot of novel adaptations and play adaptations and they just... I mean, a good example of a movie that is not a bad movie, but uh, I was just thinking about Never Let Me Go, which comes out in a couple of weeks in the U.S. and Canada anyway. It's like Clone High, right? Yeah, it is like <laughs> Clone High. Like, it's just, again, it's something that's very tasteful, very quite well directed, very well acted but just is inert. And you know, you have this sort of sense of it being like, at some point, I mean, I didn't read that more, uh, not the Ishiguro novel, but I didn't read that one, but you just, you, if you can, it feels faithful. I mean, it's just, but it's just this sort of literary fiction thing that doesn't actually have much of a narrative drive that you would probably need for a good movie. And so you contrast this with? I contrast this with actually, to, to, to play the patriotic card, because I should confess that I actually do a programming site as well with the Kingston Canadian Festival. Uh, but uh, Denis Villeneuve's uh, Incendie, which I think is a, a, a much more satisfying version of Same, where it's actually a, a very kind of almost canonic Canadian play at this point, and very successful. Yeah. But he just leans it out so much that it really is just about uh, the visual component. It still has a lot of narrative drive, but it is still very stark, and it's got some of the best sh photography I've seen in any film. It's shot by the same person who yeah. shot Polytechnic? Yes. So well, actually, yeah, it was Turpin who did that. We did not. <clears throat> No. No, it wasn't. So it's actually back with Andre Turpin who shot. It was excellent. Career, yeah. it, was, it was the best photographer, or his best cinematographer in Canada. So it really is a gorgeous movie, and it, and it and you do get the essence of the play. You do get the the, the political historical component, but it's just like a, such a, a, a you know powerful visual case. I'm going to jump in quickly with a couple of Canadian films as my turn, and then maybe we'll go to Black Swan, and I'll be fast because I've written about both of them. I. I Curling has been mentioned, and I feel just sort of obliged to say how excellent uh, a movie it is. It's been really exciting watching Denis Cote's career go on, and I say this as someone who wrote that his first movie was no good, and that's how we met, because he said, uh, I remember writing about Drifting States, that this is uh, really interesting, but it doesn't quite work, and they've been working like gangbusters pretty much uh, ever since. And his last film, Carcass, I think was one of the unqualified triumphs of Canadian cinema this decade, and certainly one of my favorite films I saw last year. He's changed again. Carcass was kind of a hybrid feature documentary. This film is clearly a, a narrative film, even though, as Andrew says, in some ways, narrative it, it kind of recedes from from traditional storytelling. But you know, like it's always dangerous to talk about auteurism because people don't always necessarily know what that means. But what I like about Denis Cote is that his preoccupations are consistent and unapologetic. He's always interested in isolation. He's interested in kind of these lopsided family units. He's very interested in guilt and how people choose to express or are unable to express that guilt. But yet in curling, everything feels completely fresh or completely new. I mean, when I saw that film in Locarno, I was rooting for it and I was worried because since I now know Denis, I'm like, oh God, I hope his movie's good. And and of course, his movie's terrific. Uh, and then on a less heralded note, I sort of feel like talking about a Toronto video artist named Daniel Coburn, whose film was also programmed in Locarno, and then for all that we beat up on Canadian films, I think quite bravely and correctly programmed here in the Canada First section, You Are Here, which is a kind of a puzzle box, palimpsest, experimental film, which as Daniel himself said, and it's one of my favorite quotes any filmmaker has ever had about his own movie, he says, the twist in my movie is that it's actually a movie. Yes. Because for about the first 15 minutes, it seems like this completely diffuse, I mean, he, he said that his original impetus for the film, and I can't really synopsize it, so you'll forgive me, but he originally, as a video artist, was sick of seeing his films programmed with other videos that didn't correspond well to it. So as a comment on programming, he said, I'm going to program my own mini film festival in a row. It'll be 75 minutes of related shorts. And then the twist is that about halfway through that process, he decided to make a feature film.